Welcome to everything car fishing. I'm back down my mid Kent waters to hopefully try and catch a car, but I've been struggling, it's been difficult, but hopefully this time I'll catch something. So let's go. Well, I had a little look around when I turned up. Um, the swim that I fished last time I was here was free, um, but there was a lot more weed in it, a lot more had got pushed in front of it, and I would have been there hours and hours trying to rake it out. So I decided to fish another swim. I came to the next swim along and there's no one in it. So I've jumped straight into it. I've never actually fished this swim before. Uh, this swim you, was underwater for a little while. Um, there's natural springs that feed the lake and uh, there was a lot of water in in spring and uh, it was mostly underwater this one. And then the weed came up and it was really, really thick in this swim. So I haven't been able to come in here, but um, it seemed to have cleared itself or I don't know what's happened. I don't know if someone's come down there and cleared it or it's just moved around and actually moved into the swim next door, most of it. It looks like some of it has. Uh, but I don't know where the rest of it's gone and maybe they've been raking it, I don't know. Other people, maybe. I led it around trying to find out what's in front of me. Um, and there's weeds to my left, there's a lot of it, um, into the next sort of swim into the rest of the lake. So um, I tried to have a look around there because I've seen carp in the past um, jumping in this particular area. Um, but it was so much weed here you couldn't put a rig at all in there. So um, that's the reason why I was having a look at there first. Um, there's a lot of um, open water out in front of me that's clear but um, I couldn't really find anything interesting out there. Um, but I did find something really interesting which was a little teeny gravel spot. Uh, most of it is silty, so finding something that clear, it was only small, um, just big enough to put a rig on, but maybe it's carp feeding on it, maybe it was birds feeding on it, I don't know, but it's worth trying for tonight um, in that spot. You never know, might do something. <laughs> and then the other rod I decided to put up to my right, just in front of a tree, um, it's a feature and it's close in as well so it's a little bit silty, it's a feature so it's worth trying. So hopefully um, coming to a different swim, I've got one close in and one further out so it's a bit different than last time, last time I was sort of flicking them out to where I was seeing the carp. I know for a fact a lot of carp do come through here um, because I've been fishing the swim next door and uh, they've been swimming up and down in front of that swim. So I do know that they come in front of here as well and they sort of come along and then end up into the shallow water early morning really. So um, that's the sort of time I'm expecting to see them. You never know, I might see one this evening. Sometimes you do spot them now and then, but um, most of the time it's early morning, they come up here and they just come along this shallower water and uh, yeah, they do tend to feed now and then. <laughs> I can't seem to get one to pick my rig up, but um, yeah, they do. I've seen them feeding on natural and things like that. So uh, yeah, so hopefully I'll catch a carp. Let's see.
fishing running rigs on both of my rods. I've got them on a helicopter tubing setup. Um, the reason I've won for the helicopters, uh, recently I um, started re wondering what was happening with my clip rigs that I was using in here. Um, and I was a bit worried that they were sinking in the seal, the leads were sinking in, the rigs were sitting funny. Um, but I've changed over to helicopter because um, I, I prefer helicopter rigs and I think they present the rig much better. My hook baits are a little bit different. Uh, recently I've been using pop-ups. Um, I did have a few carp spooking from it. So I've changed the wafter hook baits. Um, I've got one on a Cool Candy 15 miller, which I've drilled about halfway through and I've plugged it with a 12 mil yellow pop-up and I've sort of shaved down the size and then pull it inside of it and uh, it looks really good. Um, it's a wafter but also you get that little yellow little topper which is really good. Something a bit I've been playing around with recently to try and um, get around the fact that I can't use plastics here and normally I would want to put a yellow plastic on top of it. Uh, yellow plastic corn obviously um, but I can't do that. So I've been playing around with this bait recently and um, I think I've finally got it perfect and uh, sitting really nice. The other one is a 14 mil Poloni wafter, um, which is a very dull colour. Um, last time I did have trouble with the white hook baits that I think they were spooking from, either because it was popped up or because it was really white and bright. So I've gone for really dull baits. Um, the other one has got a little colour tipper on it, but this one is just a plain wafter that's sort of very dull and um, hopefully that it won't um, spook any carp from it. And, it looks pretty good on the bottom. It's a nice little bait. Um, hopefully it'll catch me a carp. <laughs> uh, I put the Plony Wafter to the right um, under the tree. Because it's got a lot of oil and stuff in it, it's gonna leak off. Um, it's more likely to not take up any seal that's, gonna, that's on the bottom. I don't really want it sucking up any seal and just smelling really funny. So I thought that'd be the best bait for that spot. And the other one, obviously I've put in the, um, the little Wafter um, with a drilled out pop up inside of it on the little clear area out into the middle um, well out further on anyway um, that's the reason that's the reason I've chose those hook baits and the reason I put them on those spots um, bait that I'm putting over the top is a little bit different um, than I've been doing recently as well I've just put mixed size pellets um, and a couple of half boilies and I've done two spoms over each rig and that is it so I haven't gone crazy with the bait, I've kept it really simple, really light um, and I thought I'd have a go at pellets as well and see if that makes any difference as well. Hopefully it works and hopefully I'll get a carp. Well, it's been a couple of hours. Um, I haven't really seen anything at all. Um, I wasn't really expecting anything, to be honest. I wasn't expecting to see nothing until tomorrow morning, really. That's when I can start seeing them. Uh, swimming around, maybe they might jump out, I don't know. But um, in previous sessions at night, I've heard fish jump. I think they're carp. Um, they sound pretty big, like big splashes and stuff. And that was roughly in this sort of area. I'm not entirely sure exactly where it was because obviously I couldn't really see anything but I definitely heard some massive splashes uh, last session and a couple of sessions um, previous as well I've heard big splashes down this sort of side of the lake I have had a few issues with the coots they have found one of my spots the one closer in they, they've they uh, somehow seen everything on the bottom and dived down and they're picking a few bits up <sighs> nothing I can do about it really um, you know I'm just it's just pellets and a few chop boilies there's nothing really blatant on that area but they're still diving down they're still trying to pick up baits yeah so I've got um, about an hour left of light and then and then I'll see what happens really probably I'll get a bite in the morning yeah let's hope <laughs>
Whoa, look at that. I finally had another bite. Um, this one's about 10 pounds. Uh, not a big one, but uh, it's been really hard. Um, I've had two pickups by a tench, and uh, also I've had uh, coots diving on me, picking up the rig. Uh, about 10 minutes before I had this one, I had a coot pick it up, and I was, had to sort it all out, and I recast it, and 30 seconds later, this one went off. <laughs> Literally just landed, and he went off. Yeah. Right, I'm gonna get him back and then uh, get the rod back out and I reckon there could be a chance for another one. Alright. Oh, well, there's a couple of things I didn't mention uh, when I had that carp. One is the bait was actually on a bottom bait drilled out with a little um, pop-up in it um, on that hard spot that I found that I th thought there might be carp might be fed, in, fed on it or maybe it was birds, I wasn't entirely sure. Um, I think it's a bit of both because I've had both. I've had birds on it and I've also had a carp on it so definitely a good spot. I can bring those tactics away with me as well like I can think about what I'm going to do next. Um, I think probably more likely I'm going to put both on that hook bait next time and stick with the same sort of pellets and a few chopped boilies and stuff like that. So uh, continue with that and uh, see what happens. I've got about an hour left of my uh, morning bite time so hopefully I'll get something else. You never know. <laughs> Well, I haven't managed to get anything else, but at least I've had that carp. I haven't had another blank, which is really good. Um, if you're wondering why I was wearing my waders when I had that carp, I managed to weed me up really badly in close and had to get out there and de-weed it and get it in the net, which was a pain, but you know, <laughs> at least I had my waders with me and managed to get it out. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.